morning. We're so glad that you are here and able to worship. We're glad for the rain today that can refresh and renew. Um, I want to lift up a few announcements this day to, to share with you. One is our yard signs to remind you of our Reconnect to Faith yard sign. We still have a few of these left if you would like to put them in your um, yard. I need to move my mic. There we go. That's better. I had it off while we were in the back praying, and I didn't put it back on. Yes. Um, also want to let the people know that are on the worship planning team that we are going to have our worship planning team meeting on October 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, even in the midst of this COVID, we are going to try and uh, think and be creative about our worship services and what we can do to, to just enhance the, the spirit that is moving in here and what we can do to have really, truly spirit-filled worship services. So that team is meeting on the 19th. Our Vitality team is meeting on October 27th at 7 p.m. And that's for us to focus on what we are doing to reach out into the community, how we can share God's love and God's grace out into Bedford. Both of those uh, meetings will be in person, but we'll also have a hybrid um, an alternative to be able to join online as well for those that would like to join via Zoom. And the last announcement that, that I'm really excited about, I want to share with you. On November 1st, All Saints Day, we are going to have live handbells in worship. And so I'm really excited about that and be able to hear the handbells and celebrate with that music. So they've been practicing they've been working and uh, we can have handbells in live worship so we're excited about that wanted to share that with you let us now begin this service of worship
All are invited to the feast. All are invited to join in God's celebration. As we enter this time of worship, may we be clothed in the love and mercy and grace of the Holy Spirit. May we ready ourselves to receive God's word for us this day. Let us pray. Almighty God, we sometimes are hesitant to accept your invitation to the banquet you have prepared. We are so busy and overwhelmed with our daily tasks that we don't think we have time to participate in your work. So help us use this time to put aside our busyness, our task, our distractions, and accept the invitation you so freely offer us. An invitation to live in relationship with you and prepare us to extend that invitation to others. We celebrate all, all have a place at your table. Amen. Let us now stand as you are able as we worship through music. Our hymn of praise is a story to tell to the nation. has changed a lot of things. We, we can't do things the way we used to, you know? Like parties. I miss parties. In April, Luke t had a birthday, and we couldn't have a party the way we normally do. It was just me and his dad and his big brother and... That was it. 
<laughs> we did. We had birthday cake and we had presents. We did. We had fun. But it wasn't the same like the parties that we've had before when we would go to putt putt or bounce about, or when he had friends over and they played laser tag in the backyard. It wasn't the same. And so part of what we did during, I've done a little bit during this COVID time, you know, is clean up around the house, do some little bit of organizing, a little bit. And I, I, I finally found streamers. We had, this is a bag full of streamers, party streamers that we had, and they were all over the house. I finally got them collected into one bag, and I got a, a big bag of balloons. So I, I have all of these, and, and when I saw this, it was reminding me about all of the parties that we've had in the past. So many parties. And I'm ready when we can have a party again in the future. Because I love parties. I think Jesus must have loved parties too. He loved to, to celebrate. He even told a, a story about a party. It's a story about a, a father who wanted to throw a, a party for his son. It was a, a wedding banquet. And wedding banquets are, are fun parties too. And so the, the day came and the, the father sent out his servants out and said, Tell everyone who's been invited to come. The party is ready. The, so the servants went to tell everyone who had an invitation, Come, come, come and join the party. Come have fun. The party is ready. But the problem was that everyone who got an invitation didn't show up. sad you have a party and no one comes but the the father didn't didn't give up he didn't give up he sent his servants back out and he said go out into the streets tell everyone you meet everyone's invited invite everybody to come come to the party so the servants went out and told everyone to come and, and they came and this time the party was full of people full of people having fun at the party I think there's a lot that we can learn from this story that Jesus told but what I want us to remember today is that you are invited to the party you are invited to, to God's party imagine imagine that the Father in this story is God. And God is inviting everybody to come to God's party. It may not be a party with streamers and balloons. But it's a party that is full of love and fun. And people who, who want to live and love and grow in relationship with God. So I hope that you will say yes, yes to coming to God's party. And we don't have to wait for COVID to be over. We can say yes right now. We say yes to God's party when we share God's love with other people, when we help those people who are in need, when we feed the hungry, when we have our faith that is active, and helping us to do things for others. That's the kind of party that I want to be a part of. And I hope you do too. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you have invited us to your party. Help us to tell others that they're invited too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in a parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. 
Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I grew up watching How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, and Aaron and I started showing it to our boys when they were preschoolers. And we watched the the live version that was done in 2000 that starred Jim Carrey. But we weren't too impressed with the 2018 version that was called just The Grinch. But I like the story of how The Grinch stole Christmas because it reminds us that Christmas is not about gifts and decorations or stuff. And by the end of the story, the Grinch begins to question his understanding of Christmas. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas perhaps means a little bit more? Now, how the Grinch stole Christmas doesn't directly mention the birth of Jesus, but it does offer a very creative and child-friendly way, a critique of society and our focus on materialism. Stories, whether in books or video, can do that. They can challenge us. They can teach us. They can inform us and help us grow. I think Jesus understood the power of stories, and that's why he used parables. So we are in our second week of Once Upon a Time worship series, in which we're exploring some of the parables that Jesus told and what those parables have for us in the midst of this pandemic in 2020. And the reason I mentioned how the Grinch stole Christmas is not because I'm trying to rush us into Advent and Christmas. Although I think, like many of us, I would like to get to a a post-COVID time. No, I mentioned this story because what happens at the end. The Grinch joins the Who's down in Whoville for their great feast. The Who's include the Grinch at their table. They make room for him. They welcome him. Even though he's so different from them, even though he had tried to destroy their Christmas, they not only made room for him, they let him carve the roast beast. Our scripture lesson today is Matthew's version of a parable that Jesus tells about a feast, a wedding banquet, a party. The father is so excited to celebrate his son's marriage. He invites people from all over to join in the celebration. He has prepared a wonderful feast, all the best foods, spared no expense, and everything is ready. But the people refuse the invitation. They go about their daily business and they they refuse to alter their plans in order to join in this celebration. Eric Thompson 
in his article on this scripture passage, reminds us that, that their reaction is actually similar to our own reaction to God's invitation to the celebration and the feast that God has prepared. We get caught up in our daily business. We get caught up in the demands of our job, of giving our, our children to their extracurricular activities. And now, sometimes just keeping up with their online learning. Dealing with chores that we have to do around the house. Caring for aging parents. So much is going on in our day-to-day -day lives. And even with COVID and, and people not getting out as much, we're still busy. Busy preparing to go out. Making sure that the situation is safe or we're interacting online and, and that can be very time consuming and emotionally draining. We're watching the news with updates that, that keep our anxieties high and we're still worried about all of the ways that, that COVID continues to affect our lives. And we're just too busy to respond to God's invitation to participate in the kingdom of God. However, as Eric Thompson explains, the importance that we put on all of our busyness is not what is important to God. In this parable, the, the king responds to society's busyness and ends up turning it upside down. The king sends out his troops to destroy all of those people and all that kept them too busy to join in this wedding feast. And then the parable tells us that the king invites everyone in the main streets. He invites the poor and the suffering, the marginalized. He invites those who society excludes or overlooks. He invites those who may never have received an invitation to a feast before. The Grinches in the community. Our son David is beginning to explore what might be the right college for him. He's a junior and I know the next two years are going to go by very fast. And we've begun having some discussions about what schools might have the programs in the fields he's interested in. And this whole college acceptance process can be scary. You know, not everyone who applies gets in. According to an ingenious prep article, uh, this year Harvard once again has the lowest acceptance rate at 4.9%. The lowest acceptance rate for a school in Virginia was UVA, with an in-state acceptance rate of 33%, and an out-of-state acceptance rate of 15%. Not everyone gets in. People are excluded. They're left out. That's what happens with college acceptances and in other parts of our society. Some people don't get an invitation. Some people are rejected and deemed not worthy. But see, that's not the case with the kingdom of God. Everyone is invited. Everyone is accepted. Everyone can celebrate at God's feast. All are welcome. And that, my friends, is the good news of God's prevenient grace. It is for everyone. No one is excluded or rejected. God invites all of us, each one of you, to God's banquet. All you have to do is accept the invitation to say, yes, I want to be included in God's party. I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to live in relationship.
relationship with Jesus. And once we've accepted that invitation, once we've welcomed Jesus into our hearts, that parable, that parable helps us see what happens next. And this has a a different ending in Matthew's version of the parable than it does in Luke's version. The wedding feast is underway. The wedding hall is full. People are enjoying the celebration. And then the king walks in and sees a guest who is not wearing a wedding robe. And this is totally unacceptable. The king is furious and confronts the guest. And the guest is speechless and just doesn't know how to respond. So the king has the guest thrown out of the feast. Now, I I don't think that this is a critique of the guest's actual clothes or guidance to us as to what kind of clothing we should wear. Instead, we can look at Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14, to help us understand this part of the parable. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. See, living into the kingdom of God involves more than just answering the invitation. It's more than just showing up for the feast. Living into the kingdom of God involves our fruitfulness. It means being identified as a guest at the feast by our actions, by how we treat one another. By how we share the good news of Jesus Christ. By how we serve God and serve people. Caroline Lewis writes in her article about this passage of scripture. And she describes the appropriate wedding robe. What not to wear. Complacency. Conformity and any kind of garb that is content with the way things are. What should we wear so that the whole of the world can see who we are and what we are about? The kind of compassion birthed by God's own righteousness that cannot anymore leave things the way they are. So, friends, what what are you wearing? What are you putting on in your life that lets others see the love of Jesus Christ in your life? How can other people see that you are celebrating the joy, the grace, the mercy that comes from being at God's feast? In an online article on Pathos by Maya Jaredat, she talks about the spiritual life of Generation Z. And this this generation, I think, really connects with the idea addressed in our scripture today. They desire to be active and engaged in their faith. They want to put their faith into action. They want to have a faith that produces fruit. They don't want to just sit in a pew or even on their couch at home watching online. One of the pastors, uh, Zach Lambert, who was quoted in this Pathos article, says that we've seen a hunger in Gen Z for more experiential stuff. 
something they get to participate in rather than receive. They want to belong to a community rather than an audience. So if we at Main Street want to reach those in Gen Z, we must have active, engaging ways to express our faith. We must be fully clothed in the love of Christ and faithfully put that love then into action in order to make a difference in our community. That, that's how the younger generation is challenging us to demonstrate, to live a life that produces fruit. In the midst of this pandemic, it, it, makes, it makes it kind of difficult we have to think outside of the box. And, and we're trying to do that. We're working on it. We were able to cheer on the teachers and students as they started their most unusual school year. And we've heard back from a, a number of teachers who were so appreciative of the bags of candy hugs. We're still looking at how we can support and encourage those teachers who are all virtual this year. Things are in the works for that, and we'll keep you posted as we get all of the details ready. And we're also in the process of doing something new, and, and I think this is going to be an exciting way for us to put our faith into action during the pandemic. We have some people working on a blessing box. And once it is finished, this box is going to be placed outside on our, our Washington Street parking lot. We hope to have it finished sometime in November as part of our, our Thanksgiving celebration. And it's going to be in that parking lot, and, and people are going to fill it with non-perishable food items that then anybody from the community who is need can come by and pick up whatever they need out of that box, no questions asked. Different small groups from the church then will, will take turns being responsible for monitoring the box, making sure that it's stocked and, and clean. I'm really looking forward to this opportunity, this new ministry, to serve the Bedford community. This past week, I did my hashtag Bedford favorite at the Bedford Christian Ministries. And I learned how those people who serve there are, are putting on their wedding robes and living the faith. They're caring for those in need through the food pantry that's provided there, through the financial assistance that is given out there, and through the clothing closet that's housed there. I'm really glad that Main Street has a long history of supporting this ministry. And we still have members who are serving there faithfully. See, in the, in the few months that I've been a part of the Main Street faith community, I have been really so impressed, so inspired by how so many of this community are being clothed in wedding robes. You not, have not only responded to God's invitation to the feast, you are producing fruit. You're celebrating God's love through your actions. And I'm looking forward to working together that, that we can produce more and more fruit. That we can engage in, in more of life-changing ministries and reaching more and more people for Jesus Christ. And making sure that all people know that they are invited to God's feast. And whether we are a, a Grinch or one of the Who's down in Whoville, we are all 
invited to God's feast. We all have a place at God's table. We are all welcome. So the question I, I leave with you today is how, how are you responding to that invitation? How are you celebrating God's love and grace and mercy in your life? How does your faith spur you into action? How are you clothing yourself? What do your wedding robes look like? Amen. Amen. One of the ways that we can respond to God's invitation to the feast is to return to God some of the gifts God has given us through our tithe and offering. We do this so that others too might know that they are invited to God's table. We do this as a way to put our faith into action. And during this time of COVID, you may place your offering in the plates here or in the back of the sanctuary as you leave or through our website and the link there or through the mail. So let us now thank God for the gifts that are being returned back to God and for the opportunity to give. Let us pray. God, bless all the gifts that are given back to you here at Main Street. Use these gifts to glorify your name, to extend your invitation to those in need and who are searching for their place, to help this community of believers to put our faith into action. Help us be faithful stewards of all your gifts as we serve you and serve your people. Amen. We continue our worship with a time of prayer, of joining our hearts and souls together to offer up our pleadings to God. A uh, number of people that I want to lift up to you today. Uh, Jim Cutler is continuing his uh, cancer treatment. Um, he had another treatment this week. I also understand that Jim had a birthday this past week, so if you come in contact with him, you might wish him happy birthday. Uh, Debbie Rose has asked us to hold her mother, Ellen Mitchell, up. Uh, she's reached the point of having to transition into another type of care. Um, we want to continue to hold Ryan Cress up. Um, Cynthia Ramsey's father is in need of our prayers. And Jenny and I would like you to be in prayer for our niece, uh, Sarah Moore. Earlier this year, we had you pray for her, and um, the doctors at Johns Hopkins consider her one of their miracles. Well, she's in need of another one of those miracles. Uh, she has to have more surgery for this uh, Louis Dietz syndrome, and she's going to have to go to Boston for that. So we don't know when, but we want you to be praying for Sarah. Um, also, uh, on the praise side, a couple weeks ago, uh, Karen Fedick and Judy Erbs were in the hospital, and they are at home and recovering. And so we celebrate uh, their recovery. If there is a concern on your heart on this day that uh, you would like uh, us to know that uh, you are praying for something, if you just simply lift your hand. Thank you. Let us pray, begin our time of prayer with a time of silence, of centering ourselves in the presence of God. Let us pray.
holy God, creator of all people. We rejoice that we are able to be here together in worship. We rejoice at the table that you have prepared for us, at the invitation that you've given us to come and to sit at the table. All oh, that invitation and preparation was through the life and death of your son, Jesus the Christ. His obedience has built a bridge for us to be redeemed, to cross over, to, to return to the place that you created us to be, your children, sisters and brothers of Christ. When we contemplate the vastness of that bridge, Sometimes it is overwhelming. And the contemplation of the love that is so great that bridged that gap is overwhelming. But you pour that love out freely in our lives. And so we just simply say, thank you, God. For those that we've lifted up before you, our humble prayer is that you would unleash that mighty power of the Holy Spirit, that healing that comes miraculously from you, the wisdom and knowledge that doctors and nurses need to treat our loved ones, the comforting assurance of knowing that we're not alone, the peace that passes all understanding. These we ask that you unleash and we join together in offering this prayer up through faith in Christ our Savior who taught us when we prayed to say, A Father is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is a new hymn. We're taking this opportunity to introduce you to a new hymn. It's in the supplement, hymnal supplement that we don't use very often. And it's one word title, Welcome.
I look forward to the day when we can sing that. But as you go forth, know that you are God's welcome. It is through your life that the good news is seen, that God's invitation to the banquet is heard. As you go forth, go with the grace of the Father, the fellowship of the Son, and know that we live under and with the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you.